Here's a beautiful film. Uh, this is Stanley's Mouth, and uh, it's made for the Adelaide Film Festival, and its director is Michael Retter. Mike Retter. Hi, Mike. Hello, Peter. Of the video store, which you still have. Indeed. And I've visited. But my copy of Harold Maud, somebody borrowed, never came back. No, it absolutely came back. Good. It's, it's back in rotation. Because we called for it. Oh, I love that film. You're an extraordinary actor, Stanley. We're going to see, I have a feeling about you, we're going to see great things from you. <laughs> Thank you very much. You, you have a face to make the angels weep. Um. It's got to be a quote from something. You can't kind of just come up with that. It, well, it is. You, you, yeah, you, you've got uh, your face is meant for the movies. Um, why do you want to be an actor? Oh, you know, I get asked that a lot, mm -hmm. and I don't know. There's, there's a lot of things. Um, natural performer, love to show off. Do as, you have to be an guys. actor? No, not at all. Love radio, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I, I think just any kind of uh, using my voice, my body to. Entertain, I suppose. And you're training at AC Arts. Yeah, second year. Which is a year. good place for you to be, yes. Great, thanks. What, who, uh, what, what shows have you done there? Um, I did Much Ado About Nothing. Yes. Um, at the end of last semester. I did a, <clears throat> a lovely play called The Love of the Nightingale, which was a mm -hmm. Greek tragedy. Mm -hmm. um, and also last term I did a, um, a clowning show, uh, which mm -hmm. was self-devised, uh, mm -hmm. called Light Minded. You're English-born, I can hear it in your voice. Yes, yes. Yes, and you came here ten years ago. Why? Um, my father retired, and mm. um, so we all moved over here, I guess, for a fresh start. I'm youngest of four. Yes. Um, and so, yeah, we all just moved over here. It's an unusual name for a young person, Stanley. Oh, we all have very old person names. Do you? Such yeah. as? We've got Stanley, Dulcie, Martha and Alfred. Wow. Yeah. And you like Stanley? It suits you. Yeah, it's great. No one else has it. No, no, that's right. Yes, there's no young Stanleys mm, that's uh, it. around. Yeah. So, the, the, and you were in some television series. Yes, uh, about two years ago now, I was in a little show on uh, Channel Ten called Sam Fox Extreme Adventures. Yes. Was yes. it popular? Yeah, it did really well. Oh, good. Um, good. How did you get it? Um, oh, that's a. Bit of an odd story. Uh, so I, I just finished year 12 and um, mm. my drama teacher... Where? Where were you doing? At uh, Glenunga, Glenunga International. Yes, yes. Um, and they put out a casting call for a oh, yes. TV series shooting in Adelaide. Yep. And my girlfriend at the time was going for the role mm. and I was picking her up and um, the casting <coughs> agent came out from her audition, saw me, asked me if she could just take a photo. Um, she did. Mm. And then mm. two weeks later I got a call for another audition and then... Mm. Yeah, got the part kind of out of nowhere. Six mm. months filming. Wow. Film, uh, SAFC. Yeah, it was yeah, great. It was good. Which was a good experience for this. How did you find Stanley Browning, Mike Retter? Um, well, I, I wanted to make a film extremely quickly, so I just uh, we put a call out on social media mm. and um, uh, said what the film roughly was <coughs> uh, and actors come out of the woodwork because there's, sure? there's a lot of people going to acting school and yeah. there's, there's a lot of people... Uh, but there's not enough films. So once you put a film out there, people put their hand up. They want to be part of something. You, this, it's, a, it's a hard film to describe. It's about a boy called Stanley. Uh, and <clears throat> it's about uh, his experiences. It's, it's a kind of non-narrative, although there is narrative. Um, <clears throat> it's experimental in style. It has very interesting use of camera. It, for a start, it's in this 9-16 ratio. Can you explain that, please? Instead of a widescreen, it's a tall shape. So if you're watching it on a conventional widescreen, you'd have black bars on the side. Mm -hmm. So it's tall, and when shown in a cinema environment, it, mm -hmm. we show on a tall screen. There's been, I think, down at Hart's Mill, they showed these films before, didn't they, Mike? Uh, we, we did have a thing called 916, yes. uh, and we still have a thing called 916. It's right. bigger and better, in fact, uh, which is uh, exclusively vertical cinema, mm -hmm. uh, as it's called. But how do you do that? Is it a, a, a certain lens? or No, you... Tilt your camera on its side. <laughs> oh, I see. Oh, right. Good heavens. Well, how, so you, do, you, you must get yes. a stiff neck from No, looking. no, no, no. The, the, oh, you, just, you, can, you use the camera right. in a slightly different way and you get used to it and then right. someone asks for you to do something widescreen and then that becomes weird. But oh, So does it digitally alter so you're looking at it? You're yeah, and, looking yeah, at it yeah indeed. Side. Like e yeah. editing, we yeah. would have a screen on its side going up. Yes, yeah. yes. So we've just... Filming yes. like that, indeed. Yeah. It's about, and this boy, we see him with his, we presume his family. We see him in Bible 
studies. Uh, and then we think, uh, oh, well, it's going to be a reaction against that. But it's not at all, no. actually. No. no, which is it's a kind of twist. <laughs> and we see this, uh, this young man in a completely uh, a loving and happy relationship with another boy, uh, which is very beautifully done. Um, and uh, we see a bit of, uh, I, I suspect, sexual predation later on, don't we? And a bit of tension in his life. Mm. But uh, that's about it, really, isn't it? Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a film of emotions, really. Yeah, it is. And it's a film of close-ups. Yes, yeah, so I, I think it's not a film of uh, issues. It's a very uh, uh, emotional one. There's a great history of religious films the, when we think of them today, we think of a really corny American ones, mm. but Tarko- like Song of Bernadette. And well, that sort of thing. things like uh, like you know uh, Tarkovsky was a Christian filmmaker. You know Bresson, mm. a, a Christian filmmaker. Yeah. Radical filmmakers who changed film language. Yes, um, but I think we've forgotten where a lot of great art comes from, and a lot of great art has always been religious. Yes. Well, I mean Richard Dawkins, uh, the. Uh, the uh, most prominent atheist in the world mm. says that um, the Bible is the wellspring of uh, the wellspring of Western culture. You know, Western culture is unimaginable without the Bible, and you know, as, as, a, as a piece of literature, of course, and and you know, as a kind of moral compass too, I suppose. Uh, so, and you had the cooperation of of uh, several ministers of religion in this film who are producers. Yes, they, they, they trusted me. Uh, mm, I said, mm. I, I want to make a gay film. Mm. Uh, but most of all, I want to make a, a religious film. Mm. Uh, and I didn't think the two things were really at odds. Mm. This was just the character. Mm. Um, and this is a film about that moderate Christian center that doesn't make a lot of noise, mm, but mm. exists. Mm. Um, that, that, that not all prejudiced people at all. In mm. fact, some of the nicest people in our society have um, religion, um, Christianity and other religions. And it's kind of like, that algebraic X that gives them a bit of a high calling. So I, I have a fondness for religion. Can you watch the film, Stanley? Yeah, I haven't watched it in a while. I actually, mm. when I was just telling Mike, I don't actually think I've seen the final cut. Yes. Um, it just seems to change. I get a message from Mike mm. every fortnight saying, I've completely changed it. The ending's different. <laughs> we're, doing, we're, just, we're, just do, we're doing this now, and it, it's great. It's a film in love with film, too, and I love that. Yes. And yes. it's about, what, 40 minutes long? Uh, it's 61 minutes. Is it 61? Well, it, it flew by. Mm. Uh, as, it's, as a piece of experiment, it, it, it is extremely exciting. I can't congratulate you highly enough, uh, Michael. Mike, it really uh, impressed me. It, it's poignant. Uh, it's interesting. It's beautifully done. I can see uh, Gus Van Sant influence, which is no bad thing. Elephant um, and the other, uh, the Kurt Cobain movie. I can see a bit of Warhol, but this, because I know you know your film and you're a student of film, aren't you? I've never studied film, uh, but I've had a video shop for three years. Well, that's the same so thing. I've, I've, exactly. I've had people uh, come in like yourself uh, mm. who love cinema mm. and they ask questions but they tell me things I've never mm. heard of, mm. and it's been the greatest film school mm. uh, having well, the video shop. As you know, Orson Welles said that it's a ribbon of dream, and I, 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 I saw that in, in this film, which you've probably made digitally, of course, but it doesn't look digital. Some digital film can look digital. I think we embrace the rawness because if you, you think did. about it, mm. film has texture. Yes, exactly. And, and we're anti-texture and everything mm. is soft and perfect and pristine. It's, uh, cinema's become unexpressive. In fact, I would argue we don't make films anymore. They look just like our ads and they sound just like our mm. ads. Mm. And uh, Goddard said his filmmaking was criticism. And in a way, this mm. was for um, Alison and myself. Uh, Alison's the producer of yes, the film yes. and she's a, a massive cinephile. Yes. Um, but had... Never really made anything, but she embraced this project and kept it together, and it's very much her film as well. Why is it called Stanley's Mouth? Because we couldn't come up with a better title. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the actor's called Stanley, and because yeah. we were blurring reality and fiction yes, so much, we yes. decided to make the title Blur Reality. Did you feel you, you, that you were playing a character or playing yourself, kiddo? I was playing... Um, uh, it, it's interesting... With this film, um, Mike let me be sort of whoever I wanted to be. I could make mm. the character whatever I want. He mm. gave me ideas of what the character does, what he believes in necessarily, mm. but everything mm. else was up to me. Yep. And I just sort of found it on the way. I didn't yep. make any sort of decisions. What was difficult for you? Um, 
the, the sex was definitely a difficult part mm. um, from the get go, but I mm. was really excited to just embrace that and give it a go. I knew mm. that in my career I was going to have to do that eventually. Um, yes. But everything else just came really naturally. Um, Mike made it a really comfortable experience. Um, and yeah, it was just, and I was really passionate about it as well. And I made that very clear to Mike. And I think um, he could tell that. Mm. Um, and this is done without, you're not self conscious. It's done yeah. very naturally. It's done very respectfully. Yeah. Yeah, completely. Uh, you know, which speaks well of you as a young person. Mm. Yeah. Because it can't be easy. Always put your faith. Uh, or, or your bet on young people, yes, uh, because yes. they don't have a sense of entitlement, no. and and they're exciting and interesting, and they might not know everything, but their ability to learn and to just go with it uh, is 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 wonderful. And people my age are actually this is when we really start to become quite boring. But uh, you're in your thirties. Yeah, I'm 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 thirty one, but there's ten years. Um, but with with these young people, they they just do it and they go with mm. it, and they're a bit fearless. I mean, you brought up um, mm. Awesome Wells. I, th- mm. I think he was twenty three when he made. Citizen Kane. Mm. And so they're really, yeah, having faith in young people really got this film across the line because it was a zero-budget film. Mm. That's it, yeah. Something to prove but nothing to lose. Exactly, mm. exactly. Yeah. And, and boy, have you proved it beautifully. And I was, I was moved by it because, you know, it, and this has come up recently because of the 40 years uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago since the decriminalisation of homosexuality mm. in South Australia by Don Dunstan and others. So 40 years ago, you could have been arrested uh, in, for making this film. Yes. Um, uh, uh, times have changed. Um, and, and for me, uh, the, uh, the, the, the ra- radical thing about it thematically is really that it's not radical. It's Hyper normalized. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to make a, a, a very emotional film with uh, religious elements and sexual mm-hmm. elements. It's more of a cu- which don't clash. About. That's the no. unusual thing. Except that one's personal morality, you, you may go into a zone that you don't like, and then you want to come back to mm. where you're comfortable. Which we see in the film, and it's universal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where is it being seen? Uh, it's been shown at uh, Adelaide University mm. Union Cinema. Yes, uh, as the, part of the film festival. Uh, yes, part of 916 mm. uh, Adelaide Film Festival. Um, and Justin Martinick uh, runs the Film Society, mm. and so they're excited to show it. And sure. um, we're having a big do there. When is it? On the uh, 20th. Which is next Tuesday, next 7 o'clock. Next Tuesday night, 7 o'clock. Yep. Yes. Will your friends be there, your family? Yeah, yep. all my family will be there. I think they're very interested to... Uh, See what came out of all those hard hours in Port Adelaide and why the <laughs> heck I was there. And what sort of budget? Uh, zero. Uh, catering nothing. most of the time. Mm. Not, not most of the time. <laughs> he bought me a sandwich literally oh, no, one no. time. Oh, no, no. We, we got fed because I need to be fed as well. It, so it, essentially it's, it's you've work. made it for nothing. Yeah. Yes, and, oh, and I really think a lot more people should do this. Uh, I agree. We don't have to shoot on film anymore. We don't need to develop it. The, no, no. These things are cheap. It's just time. No. It's just time. Give, give time and you'll learn on the job. Yeah. It inspires creativity as well. You need to find interesting and new ways to um, approach things without money. It's fascinating. And, you know, uh, um, it's, that French artist, uh, Soro, said he was asked what he did today and he said, I made a hat. I painted a hat. Look, I made a hat where there never was a hat. And this is, so you've made a film which is now out in the world where there never was a film. That's rattling around as the USB on, which I watched. Um, where there never was a film, you see. And you've made something very, very beautiful and very poignant and profound. And I think you've, you've established yourself. I'd like to see your other work, Mike. I'm astonished by it. And this boy, because mm. I think you can go on. Uh, I see great things in you, kiddo. I really do. Yeah, yeah. Again, a face to make the angels weep. Good on you, and uh, I uh, so enjoyed it, and I wish you well for the premiere, and it'll be available at your shop, won't it? Uh, People can sure. We haven't thought that far ahead, well, but must. obviously you it can will. Rent yes, it, indeed. Um, and you're still looking for films. People can bring you films. Absolutely, yes. We, we we've just signed another uh, lease. So Good. We're, we're there a little bit longer. Uh, now this, you're on the corner, sort of the Black Diamond corner there next to where the old tobacconist was at, at Port Adelaide, just as you come round Commercial Road into St Vincent Street, and you can kind of park there too, which is yeah, handy. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and it's a kind of an art DVD, DVD an art film. It's DVD a, library. Uh, yeah, it's a, 
as a collective of people. Uh, mm-hmm. We put our personal collections out there. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. It's a good thing, Mike. I wish you well, and I th- I, I'm very pleased with your film, and I thank you both for coming in. Thanks so much, Peter. Thanks, Peter. Stanley Browning and Mike Retter there, and the film is Stanley's Mouth, and it's part of the uh, Adelaide Film Festival, premiering next Tuesday night at Adelaide University.